so I'm stuck. The pad is kind of a U shape. My back is broken. Gorgeous fish. Morning to you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, please get in this net. I get stuck here, I am screwed. Shit. This is just getting nuts. I'm halfway down this logging road. Now it's a question of do you turn back or just keep trying to get through? Here we go. There's some deep pools in that pond. I have no signal here and I'm a little frightened. Okay, so I'm stuck and stressed out right now. Uh, I have no signal. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm very far away from everything. <sighs> Shit. Okay, so I got out of that, uh, and I don't have the nerve to try it again. So, now I'm going back all the way I just came. <sighs> Forest access road number two is already off to a bad start. This means uh, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and start from Ranger Lake, which adds uh, about five kilometers of portaging each way and adds a full day of travel each way. So that's um, that's too bad, but gotta do it. All right, 12 hours later, I'm on Ranger Lake. Now I've got an hour of daylight to uh, get finished backing up here and uh, set up camp somewhere. All right, finally <clears throat> settled on a site here. It's not very good, it's sloping all around. My tent is back there in the trees where I found probably like, I don't know, close to a 10 degree slope, which is better than here. But uh, yeah, despite that today hasn't really gone all that well, I'm really excited for this trip. I'm doing the Ranger Lake Loop in Algoma. It's uh, not well traveled. I got it out of uh, Kevin Callan's Ontario's Lost Canoe Roots. And uh, I've just based on my research, it doesn't sound like it's well traveled at all. <laughs> Mosquitoes are coming out just in time for the trip. <laughs> it's May 14th, and uh, I've got up to two weeks to do this trip. Depends how hard I want to make it. We'll see. Oh, yeah, and my fire pit is a shopping cart. Thousands of years from now, when archaeologists dig this up, they're going to discover this shopping cart and piece together that, oh, this metal device is used for fire pits. This steak was in the hot car for six hours today, but with any luck, it won't make me violently ill. Cheers to the finest time of year. Alright, it's just after 7 a.m. and I'm just about to pack up the canoe. Uh, just gonna show a quick overview of the route. So this is Ranger Lake here. I'm camped there. Heading up today into Samo Lake. And then through a few small lakes. Gong Lake, this is where I was trying to get to 
in the uh, with the access roads but early this is just after ISO early spring is a bad time to be exploring forest roads they're gonna be flooded and washed out so that was dumb anyway so where I want to get to today is at the confluence of the uh, I'm not gonna say it right but Nishtugani Nishtugani anyway and the west of Benidong so these two rivers come together here this portage here is another reason I was trying to avoid or trying to get to here um, it says 900 meters but uh, my reports say that whatever it is now the portage it's closer to three kilometers so if that's the case um, that really sucks to have to do that both ways but anyway I uh, want to put in a huge day today, huge day tomorrow, but uh, there's a strong headwind already, so we'll see. Oh, and this is the book that this route is contained in, if you wanted to buy it, which you should. So I just got to the portage and realized that my raincoat, which was draped over this, was ripped out of the canoe by the wind and I guess I'm gonna go looking for it but it's probably sunk by now it had oh had some weight in it oh man you gotta be kidding me it's gonna be gone now I'm gonna be raincoatless for the trip just realized that something else is missing it took my life jacket too both of them I got too hot paddling in the wind, so I t just took them off, stuffed them back here. Unbelievable. The life jacket, I should be able to find if it hasn't been blown to who knows where, but... Oh. Painful. Okay, back to square one. Did not find the life jacket, did not find my rain jacket. Came back to the car, got this winter jacket, my other life jacket. So those are taken care of. Drove 200 kilometers to get signal for something I won't even get into. And uh, I'm gonna restart the trip now. None of that ever happened. Well, oh, it's definitely a trout. I just felt it unwrap. Probably rolled. It just unrolled. Oh, that's Laker. Beautiful fish, hooks out. That is perfect. Try, tested, and true. Just coming around an island. This guy hammered it. Come here. Beautiful lake trout. Gorgeous. He's burping. Whoops. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Listening up to him burp. Oh, okay, okay. Go. So first portage is behind me, feels great. Feels like the trip's back on track. Uh, ran into some boaters on Ranger Lake and they said that the ice literally went out this morning is when they saw the last pieces drifting by. So that combined with the beautiful weather, that fish, that lake trout, things are looking up. Well, despite making a terrible amount of progress today, I'm setting up camp on Samo. Got a nice island site here. Exposed rock with some nice big pines, good sun, good water access, so this feels good. And I got the hammock set up back there, and that's where I'm going to go for a while. That, that headwind took a lot out of me. Definitely glad that I stopped early, slowed down a little bit. I've got a 3K portage to start off tomorrow. And if I tried to do that today, I would probably just be finishing and scrambling to set up camp somewhere. When camping starts to feel stressful, you're doing it wrong. Fish on. I can see him here. 
rolling like crazy. Beauty. Hooks out, but he's all wrapped up. Terribly. Oh man. See if I can slide it down his body here. Be the fastest way to get him back. Yep. Alright, good. I'll deal with that mess in a second. Get this beautiful little guy free. Thanks, my friend. Alright. Go on. That's a nice ending to today. Let's see if I can get this huge knot untangled. Look at that. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to cut it. <laughs> Echo! I'm on my way with North and uh, I've got an absolutely killer tailwind. This was forecasted so it's another reason why I stopped yesterday. I was hoping to just make up a ton of ground today. So today with this portage coming up and tons of paddling is going to be brutal. Alright, I'm at the north end of Samo Lake and about to start a massive portage through there. Times like these, having the camera gear and all the fishing gear, whoa, really sucks. This is going to be so long and my food bag is real heavy. I really desperately need to get a food dehydrator. Well, the uh, portage follows the road that I was supposed to be on, I think. And it's pretty flooded here too. I've got the water shoes on, but that doesn't make this any warmer. This water is ice cold. Check this stuff out. Whoa! <laughs> Quicksand, essentially. Oh, poop everywhere. All kinds of animal signs here. Well, I've turned north for Island Lake, and I was told this road would be flooded. And it sure is. It sure is. My feet are going brutally numb. It's just deep enough to paddle now. This water is black as night. Can't see anything. Just paddling on a road. Well, it's painful to have to rush through Island Lake here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm absolutely flying here. Lost one. Well, this is the only thing I can see that looks anything like a trail. So hopefully this is the portage here, right beside this beaver beaver lodge. This is fantastic. Oh, I was about to give up on this route. I uh, tweaked my ankle on the three kilometer portage in addition to an already tweaked knee. So uh, I was just thinking, I was looking through this stuff, worse actually, thinking I can't do this, this is too risky, uh, but I just found the trail, so the route continues. Well, I'm at the other end of the portage into Mystery Lake, and it was completely jammed with these logs, those ones too. So I spent the last uh, 15 minutes or so just shoving them around and tried to wedge them in there as best as I could. 
so that they'll stay there for my return through the same route. And on the plus side, uh, the cold water is helping to numb my ankle and knee. Got a nice trout on. Jumped out of the water. Oh yeah. Whoa! <laughs> I think that was probably just off camera, but wow. Just jumped up with the net. It's a laker. <laughs> Holy cow. Funny how lake trout really change colors in different lakes. And at different times of year. Beauty. It's burping. Just trying not to drop you, bud. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good. It's been a pretty tough day. It's been raining on and off too. My ankle hurts, but I'm smiling. Mystery Lake isn't quite as beautiful as Island Lake. It's still nice, but it is full of life. Got pitcher plants, all kinds of beaver lodges. Got that trout. Just feels very alive here. Oh, yeah. That's a log. Embarrassing. All right, on to the portage into Gong Lake. If anyone's planning on doing this trip, there's a bunch of stuff over there that looks like it might be the trail, but it's tucked in, in around these big spruces. Uh, and then just past this this beaver uh, lodge right there. Into Gong Creek now, another portage behind me, and one more to go for today. It's gonna be a big dinner tonight. I'm starving. I've been spending more and more time clearing the trails as I get in deeper. And the pines, trees in general, are getting, big, are getting bigger as well. All right, last portage is done. I had to do uh, a good hour of clearing on it. And uh, I am just exhausted. Um, so I'm going to get in the, in the river here. And hopefully we uh, find a campsite soon. Kind of wondering how I'm going to get back to this access point. Uh oh. I am just starting the upstream travel and I got nailed by a pike. I wasn't aware that there were pike here. I thought this was pretty much all brook trail. Oh, oh man. I'm a good eater, but. And exactly the meal that I need. I'm too tired to clean it and everything. I just want to stuff my face with whatever is my food bag. Wow, what a meaty belly on this guy. Yeah, he's girthy as heck. Not long at all, but just fat. See you, dude. All right, to my right, I've got the Nush, to the left, the West Albinadong. It's just such an incredible moment of calm here. That bird is calling out so beautifully. It's not raining for a moment. There's about an hour of daylight left, and uh, the two campsites that I had marked on my map, I couldn't see anywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to, anywhere I can get in, the problem is getting your canoe into shore. It's just alder all along shore, and then thick bush behind that. But I'll clear anything. Wherever I can get a tent down, I'm going to sleep. All right, found somewhere, and my tent pad is kind of a U-shape and diagonally sloping, um, but I got the tent down. It's below one or two Widowmakers, um, but uh, should be fine. Got some broccoli and onions frying for my non-calzones, which I'm going to eat a lot of. 
canoe I got up in there and uh, yeah, just in this beautiful old spruce forest. Exhausted, starving, I am pooped. And the first proper meal of the day. The spring peepers are absolutely deafening right now. It's actually kind of abrasive. <laughs> and uh, the mosquitoes have come on a lot stronger tonight. Probably by the end of this trip, they're gonna be real bad. Oh, oh man, my back is broken. <laughs> oh. 5K portages. Double carried, so 10, 10 kilometers of heavy loads, plus five kilometers going back to get the second load, plus two hours of clearing the trails. Uh, and the, pla the paddling was fine today, I had tailwind the whole way. But uh, that, that killed me. I am absolutely beat. Um, but I'm going to bed dry and safe and fed, so there are worse nights out here. Alright, I wish I had a flat place to sleep on. It's gonna not be good for my back, but oh well. So that was a long night, but uh, it's over, and uh, it's time to head upstream on the west of Binadong toward uh, either Torrance Lake, where I might camp tonight, or Megazon. It was cold last night. I was tossing and turning all night. Um, it wasn't supposed to get to zero or freezing, but I don't know. My socks seem to... my wet socks from yesterday. I don't remember them being this hard and rigid, so... I guess it probably did. Oh, we got time to warm up now. Beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky, which is such great news, because now I can uh, just get sun on everything, dry it out, warm up. And I'm really excited for the fishing at this point. Fish on. Oh no, no, no. Oh, brutal. <laughs> Oh, there was some good weight there. Dang. like a pike. I stopped to take off my socks because my feet were just painfully cold. It's still small. Give me a little grunt. Hey girl, I'm over here. I know they can't see too well, but I don't know how poorly, so. Hmm. Best not to get too close. Seems like she's coming for me, which is weird. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, she is coming right for me. Looking right at me. Hey, girl. 
Hey there. No calf, so I wouldn't think she'd be aggressive. She's smelling me right now. I can see her nose moving. I'm just gonna reel in so I'm ready to scoot if she comes at me. Never know, it's a wild animal. Okay, there we go. Now I think she's good. Cool. That was nice. First log jam. Tricky one to get over because uh, there's quite a bit of current. It's relatively deep and, uh, and it's ice cold. This is an awkward little spot. On the other side of this island right here is a big log jam and right after you lift over the log jam there are some rapids. And there's supposed to be a portage here, which I couldn't see anywhere, but it is in there. Pretty cool. So, that's what the rapids look like that uh, I was potentially supposed to wade or line. Uh, so that's five portages added that I planned on wading. So combined with the uh, upstream travel, uh, today is going extremely slowly. Gorgeous brookie. So beautiful. Oh wait, what? <laughs> Based on the profile, I thought it had to be a brookie. It's a walleye. Again, I had no idea there were walleye in this system here. Just a tiny one. Figured it had to be a brookie. The system has it all. Evidently a few of them in here. They're hitting on most casts. <laughs> this might be the biggest white pine I've ever seen. It's got a huge crown. Awesome. Hardly had time to document the uh, struggle today, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but here's uh, exhibit A. This is the portage. 300 meters of this, and then one more after that. It's shallow here, right beside these uh, these falls almost there so I just caught um, probably the third biggest lake trout of my life it was an absolute beauty thought I hit record uh, I didn't put it back in oh oh man okay whatever um, that's kind of painful I was describing my euphoria, which is now evaporating. Um, yeah, I have no photo, I didn't take a photo. I was just gonna extract a still from the footage. Got it trolling this through the narrows on Torrance Lake, which as I was describing, uh, is off the charts beautiful. Um, hmm. I really have no way other to prove it. I got slime on my filter, which I took off because it was too dark during shooting, <laughs> like, ah, uh, okay, anyway, it was like this, and I had a beautiful photo, well, video lined up, saw it in the frame, that's kind of soul crushing, oh, well, I had a great battle too, be a lot more interesting if you were actually watching that happen, instead of me describing how I failed to record it happening, wow, tough pill to swallow.
Anyway, gotta get going. I'm gonna do one more portage into Megazon. And I gotta get there for a big northern view. It's a big northern lights show uh, forecasted for tonight. And uh, I want a good view. Well, I literally just shut off the camera a few seconds ago. And there's another fish on. This is not big. The other one is just pull and drag like crazy. This one is putting up no fight until it gets to the boat, at which point it will almost definitely put up a fight. Oh, oh, is that a brookie? Oh, it's a laker. Oh. So if we make today a four species day, pike walleye, that laker, which I have no proof of, and this little, little laker. The other one was super pale, and this one is squirmy and dark. <laughs> I know your tricks, <laughs> but a nice little fish. Okay. I'm absolutely gutted that I didn't get that last one on film. That would have been new proof pick for sure. Wading up through the water course that connects uh, uh, Torrance to Megason. It was a little hairy there for a second, but I think I'm past the worst of it. Can't see bottom anymore. Oh, no, don't get deep on me now. Oh. Save myself a portage at the end of the long day. I'm on Megason and I've got an incredible little island campsite here. Great water access. Great tent pad over there, finally. Fire pit too. And views everywhere. Gonna be a great sunset. I think it's about nine o'clock right now, so it's about to go down. And then big open view to the north. See what happens when the lights go out tonight. Finally have uh, dry socks and shoes on. And my fingers are so dry, they're like sandpaper. Listen to that. Ugh, feels awful. I'm gonna get myself fixed up. Well, it's finally supper time. I've got a bunch of garlic bread, which was destroyed in my food bag, but still equally tasty. And a heap of broccoli, steamed broccoli with butter. I am happy. Mmm. Broccoli has never tasted better. Well, it's midnight and I gotta get to bed. I can't stay up any longer. So, uh, I'm just gonna send the day off. It's an amazing day. Despite the, uh, the lack of aurora, there's still been a beautiful crescent moon. Great stargazing. Perfectly calm night with the loons calling, so. Anyway, I'm gonna send it off with fireworks of my own here. Got an awesome tailwind to take me to the north end of Megason, where I'll start uh, the exploratory part of the route. And all I need to do is find camp somewhere, catch a fish for dinner, trout, and hopefully catch uh, a fish to make up for the one I didn't photograph yesterday. That would be a perfect day for me.
Well, I'm expecting pretty rough portages from here on out. And this is the first take out. It's got a tree growing over it, so I'm guessing uh, it's been a while. Right before the start of this trip, I knew I'd be doing a lot of clearing, so I replaced my saw blade and it's cutting like butter right now, so that's nice. Makes it a heck of a lot easier. Megazan Lake used to have a fishing lodge on it, but it's since been abandoned. And I'm guessing they were the ones who did the trail maintenance because there's no semblance of a trail anywhere. Uh, thankfully, it's an old forest, so it's not all bushy and thick bush. Uh, so you can just choose the path of least resistance, but that is a winding pathway through all this deadfall. So I realized on my map there's a little stream that connects the two lakes and it seems like I can wade right up it so save myself a big headache there over a kilometer half a kilometer uh, portage and I'm getting hit by brookies here they haven't got a hook yet but maybe this time oh there must be several I'm getting hit oh yeah oh man <laughs> I get a size down I just, just threw what I had on, but I'm gonna go a little smaller, a little spoon. Should be guaranteed brookies. All right, should be guaranteed brookie. Yep, oh yeah. Oh, beautiful, what? Oh, it's fighting like crazy. It's such shallow water here, I can see everything. Has to be a brookie. <laughs> and realizing my net is full of stuff. Oh, gorgeous. Hooked in the corner of the mouth. Oh, what a spectacular fish. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Come here. Oh, no stats. How's that? Look at those beautiful blue vermiculations around those red dots. Black mouth. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Okay. Let him recuperate there for a sec. And he's swimming. He's gone. Cool. Let's see if I can get another one. Another one right after. So pretty. There must be a dozen in this little riffle. I can see them hitting it. They don't. Yep. Yeah. And then they fight like crazy. This one might be a little bigger. Amazing. Another nice one. Pretty amazing fish. There he goes. It's just a little uh, tandem hook. I think I cut the one of the hooks off of the treble. So easy release, which is good. So, a 570 meter bushwhack got traded for 20 seconds of waiting and a brook trout honey hole. Hmm. I feel like I cheated nature that was a wonderful thing. And now I'm just heading down this creek. It looks like it's gonna be nice. Hello. Hello. This can't be a laker. Man. <laughs> oh, lovely. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, it's the lake trout. I mean, it's like three feet of water. This, I'm in a kind of a widening here. 
They can go anywhere in the spring. Water's cold everywhere for them. Not too bad. I was hoping to wait, but when you hit something like that, it's not possible. So I'm going to climb up on the bank here. So there's a pretty well trodden path here, which is good, but uh, it's pretty overgrown. So the clearing work's going to double, if not triple, my portage time. So exciting to be preserving this route because it is a gem. Another brookie on. Oh, oh, that's too bad. He had amazing colors. Oh. Just came a long way through that creek into this opening. So serene and secluded. If you like wilderness where you feel like you're the only person for miles and trout lakes to yourself, then you might like it here. Well, this trip uh, just isn't going as planned. Uh, the west of Binadong River, which I'm still on, north of uh, Megasan. I didn't realize it, but it's still the west of Binadong. Um, it was great for a while, and now it's just Log Jam City. And I've hit another one, and I've just been sitting here for like 10 minutes thinking about it. And I'm going to head back. Uh, there's too much to do on the way back, too much to enjoy. Um, I feel like I'd, I'd enjoy that more. So rather than keep going up this, uh, probably a dozen more log jams, if not dozens, uh, I'm just going to head back, enjoy myself. <laughs> I'd love to get into, uh, some Lakers on Torrance Lake again and lots I want to see on the west of Bindong River that I already came up and have time to, to stop and enjoy it. So it's all good. This is what I'm talking about. And it's deep here, it's always four feet, maybe six or more sometimes, so it's not not the easiest to get around. Going back over this one and some more and then uh, back to Megason, hopefully Torrance tonight. My lure was uh, snagging on some weeds, so I reeled it in. And on it was this little crustacean dude. Pretty neat. <laughs> that headwind that got me down Megazon is now my worst enemy. Got a fish on here. Felt big at first, but not anymore. Maybe. Oh, all my progress. Fighting the wind is being erased right now. Will it be worth it? Maybe. It's giving a good fight. Feels like a smolly. I bet you it's a smolly. Although that'd be a pretty big run for a smolly. No, it's a trout. We're fighting fish. Oh, nope. Hates the net. <laughs> there we go. Nice fish. Oh, I want to keep it for dinner, but I'm already going to be late getting back, so let you go. Again, it's well past dinner today. It's going to need another graveyard shift. So thankfully there was an island site about halfway up the lake so I didn't have to paddle all the way up through the headwind. Got dinner on, Paneer Makani, threw in the uh, rest of the rapidly de uh, deteriorating broccoli. And toasted naan, of course, my fave. Hmm. 
I've got round two on. It's not even 7 a.m. and I'm paddling on glass. It's beautiful. I'm going to head back into Torrance Lake and then back down the west of Benidong. Uh, and I'm going to do some exploratory work off of, off of that route on the way back that I couldn't do on the way up. Got some great uh, this big bag of dried granola seeds and nuts and stuff. It's great uh, breakfast on the go. Fish on. <laughs> I was quick on the camera on that one. I saw the rod tip twitch back so I turned on the camera in case it hit and sure enough second leader it was on. And what do we have? Can't see it the water is so dark. And it's a really dark, dark laker. Small. Look at that. So dark. No spots on him at all. Just a black lake trout. And on this side, looks like he's been battling or something, I don't know. He's got white lines all over him. Cool. Adios. Got that one on this little cheap minnow bait from uh, one of those, it's a jerk bait, uh, one of those big bins you see at Bass Pro where they have lures for like two bucks. Works well. I mean, trolling any shallow minnow bait right now is going to produce results. You don't have to fish deep in the spring, of course. beats the way up. Oh yeah. Also beats the portage which is over there too. Fish on. Smashed uh, my lure as I was bringing it out of the water. Dropped it back down and hit it again. Ooh. Turkey? Oh yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's probably the nicest brookie of the trip so far. Hook just popped out as I was touching him with the net. Oh, great colors. Oh. Wow, at the north end of Torrance Lake, uh, on the south side, there's a little creek and you can hear some rushing water. Followed it back and it's this incredible waterfall. Check this out. just keeps going and going. It's got to drop a hundred feet. And the awesome thing is, you can walk right over it, walk along the, the waterfall up the side. Incredible. Just below the falls, there's just a little creek to show for it. Fish on. Rod doubled back pretty good. And now I feel almost nothing going on here. There's still weight but no fight. Oh there it is. I have a look. I'm just going to try and shake him. Come on. There you go. A couple of sandhill cranes flying out. Well, just as I was pulling into camp, I said, one more cast, see if I can get lunch. 
sure enough, perfect trout for one. All right, one fillet, two fillet, belly meat, and some little scraps. All rinsed off and ready to go. Just need to get them seasoned up here. Tex-Mex. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. Mm. Mm. Do you want to know how good it is? No, I'll spare you. It hits a spot after... Um, for it last meet was on the the night I arrived on Ranger Lake when I had a steak. Mm. Well, I've discussed it with my traveling companions, and we have agreed that uh, we are pretty banged up, and we need a rest day. The food bag, Ralph, uh, isn't doing too well. He has turned this sickly green color. And I think he might lose his lunch and toss his cookies. Anyway, a uh, little rest will do us well today. Uh, and uh, this is a really cool campsite. Let me give you a little look. So up here at the top, there's a tent pad. Kind of nice to have your tent elevated above the water. And then there's some trails over there to get back into the woods. It's kind of like a multi-level house here. Got some steps. Rearranged the fire pit a little bit and it's got this really nice sturdy grill, so that's nice. Got my kitchen bag hanging there. Water access is a little tricky for pulling the canoe out, but it's super calm still, so I'm just leaving it in the water with a rope there. Just cool rock here along the shoreline. Got my bang bear hang here. So I'm going to give fishing a whirl again here and see if I can get that big trout back. Well, it's been raining for several hours um, and I'm just holed up in the tent. Considering that um, the wind stole my rain jacket, um, but I'm not minding it at all just resting, passed out for three hours. I got in uh, enough dry time to cook up my trout, so picked uh, the timing worked out perfectly for setting up a little camp here to rest for the day. Just gonna read. Just a beautiful evening. Water is glass. The sky is opening up back there. And it smells like a northern forest after the rain, which is beautiful. sunset and some nasty clouds are moving in and the wind is picking up out of nowhere so that means it's time to get back to camp.
this fish on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh boy, there's a run. <laughs> oh, I wonder if this is the same one that I caught before. <laughs> oh man. Just woke up. Didn't have sun. Drag's pretty tight and it's running. Uh, didn't have sun on the tent. So I thought, ah, what better way to start the day but to get in the canoe. Oh boy. Oh man. <laughs> and get some sun. And about three or four casts in. Oh, oh. oh boy. Okay. Nice trout. Not a giant. Not as big as the other one. Oh no, no. <laughs> nice. That's a nice fish. Not the same one. Oh yeah. Little Cleo, half silver, half green. And there's a nice trout. Oh yeah. The other one was substantially, it was 50% bigger. So that gives you an idea. Look at those big eyes just looking at me. And I can tell this is not the same uh, trout for sure because, see you buddy. I know where I hooked the other trout and there's no, there'd be a little hole in his lip. Anyway, that is an awesome way to start the day. This one was kind of funny. Just casted it out, let the spoon flutter down a little bit. Well, I had a handful of granola and uh, I saw my rod tip twitch as it was just fluttering down. So picked it up, set the hook and it was there. Just a small one. So I need to find the big girl again. So I'm putting the little Cleo away and I'm going to pop this oversized curly tail off bottom. I like getting footage of that fish. It's kind of like getting a girl's number at a party and one of the digits is wrong. There was a malfunction. And you can never contact her again. You can never show your buddies a photo of how beautiful she was. And you just have to live with that regret forever. <laughs> Getting hit. Oh! <laughs> Probably too small. Hence, upsizing the lure. Start weeding those guys out. Oh, yeah, just saw him. I brought the lure to the surface. He shot up and darted away like a coward. They'll short bite this all day versus the big ones, which can just inhale it and get to that hook. Got a brookie this time. Pretty. Oh yeah. In the net. These guys have so much less pressure here. They're oh beautiful. A lot harder to spook compared to fish in southern Ontario. I was just jigging for him beside the boat. He followed, and he was swirling around it like a crazy brook trout, and uh, he got it. Go. Good morning to you. Beautiful color. It's a little guy. Gone. All right, so now it's time to go back on the West of Indadong River. This time the fun way, downstream. First cast beneath these rapids. Nice brookie on. Oh wow, beautiful. Come here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Got him. <laughs> I'm getting pulled away. Oh, perfect. Hooks out. 
Oh, what a beautiful fish. Oh, spectacular. Oh, no, no. Oh, wow. How about that, Brookie? Is that nice? Gorgeous colors. Look at those fins. That is a thing of beauty. All right. Go free, buddy. One's got some spunk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's in the tree. He's in the tree I am holding my leg onto to hold the canoe here. Oh, there's another one. I'm checking him out. Oh, this is a nice brookie. Beauty, absolute beauty. That was, oh yeah, hooks out. That was one where the cast went exactly where I wanted it and the right fish got it. Oh, oh, I can't get my hand around it, it's tall. Oh yeah. That is beautiful. Rookie fishing. Oh. <laughs> How amazing. <laughs> These are the pools that I didn't have time to fish on the way up. That's the best rookie of the trip so far. There's a horse. Hit me, oh, it keeps hitting it. That's the beauty of soft bait, is they don't get stung by anything hard, so they're willing to hit it again. Just hit it four times, but it won't get it hooks at. Might have been even bigger. Hold my pants down. Got him. Got him. He's long. Long rookie. Come here. Oh. That death roll. Brutal. It's when an angler's heart sinks. get in this net. Yeah! <laughs> oh my goodness. What a tank. What a tank. It just gets bigger every time. Look at that brookie. Look at him. Red belly. Oh wow. What a fish. What a beauty. <laughs> oh, I can't help but admire them. They're absolutely stunning. There we go. Just holding it in the water here while I pull out the hook. One last look. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. Uh, three fish in short order, but I gotta keep on moving. I'm not on such a tight deadline today, but I gotta find camp somewhere. I've decided I wanna clear a really good camp somewhere along the river, hopefully near the midpoint. It's what this route is really lacking right now, is a good place to camp halfway up the river. So uh, I'm gonna try and do that. Uh, it's still got lots of time today, but it could take a while. Just cleared the first log jam today, and it was a lot trickier than I remember coming up. For some reason, maybe the log shifted, uh, but I fell backwards on my wrist. 
I was pretty lucky. I feel fine, so it could have been bad. On to the next one. This giant deserves one more look. It is truly immense. Another fish real quickly before the next, or after the next uh, set of rapids. And much to my surprise, another walleye. I was sure it was gonna be a brookie, but. Gobbled that down. Nice little walleye. So I found the perfect place to establish a campsite uh, and now the clearing work begins. There, now the water access is a bit clearer. So I'm all finished setting up camp. Here's a little look. You got the inflowing current there, good for fishing. Made a stone fireplace here. Uh, there are no big rocks, so that's the big downside of this site. There's no way of making a proper fire pit and it's all, there's just so much tinder back there that it would be dangerous to make a fire pit in here. Cleared the trails uh, just to get in and around here. Hammock, tent pad on moss. The river opens up here into a nice gentle little lake. And then if you keep walking back there, you get to a private brook trout lake Seriously, there's a uh, that was one reason why I chose this area is that there is somewhere down there. I started walking on it. It's pretty clear. There's a brook trout uh, portage lake. Not that I need to portage to get to brook trout right now, but uh, I'll probably check it out tomorrow. And there's quite a bit of moose poop on this site, so um, maybe I'll run into one. Let's see what people are saying about Hotel John Terrio online. First review says there are moose feces right beside my tent. Okay, well we'll get housekeeping on it. Chill. Second review. Um, this place is an absolute rat hole. Well that's harsh. Third review says this place is falling apart. In the last review, somehow there are already so many, uh, says the fire pit is absolute bleep. That's, that's true. I worked really hard on it though. Gathered like a hundred stones. Another little walleye. So I'm starting the day by trying to clear the trail to that brook trout lake, Sari Lake. And uh, after a little while it opens up into this big clearing with this creek. It's quite beautiful. I've been following the trail for a while and trying to find the trail actually. And it is officially lost. It uh, just runs along this stream for a while. but. Uh, if there was a trail here, it has been lost to the forest. There, uh, There's a trapper's cabin there on that purple dot. And I'm assuming these were his trails. And the GPS track I had for this one just abruptly ends there, roughly where I am. And I thought that must have been an error or, uh, or you could get in the canoe at this point. But no, it's just bush now. So, And sorry is a bit further, quite a bit further. So... I'm not going to bushwhack that whole way. Just going to uh, paddle downstream, continue on my way. It's a beautiful day for travel. 
Whoa! <laughs> well, I <laughs> uh, wasted a couple hours trying to get to Sari, but um, who needs it? Back on the west of Binadong, and within a minute, got into a pike. On my way upstream, I mentioned I didn't have enough time that day to see anything, so I wanted to get a better view of those. And funny enough, there's a campsite right here and another one further down on this side. I portaged on the other side, which was pretty rugged. Uh, so that's funny. My little camp um, is kind of poor by comparison, but this has the loud rapids. I don't really like sleeping beside them, so. Here's the campsite at the north end of the chutes. It's pretty dreamy. Some of the only exposed rock along the river. I should have known there'd be a site here. If only those rapids were runnable. Because this portage here is not the easiest. and a calf in the bushes there. Huh, I was going to float right past them, but uh, I heard a, a branch snap. But now they've tucked in and out of sight. Tight squeeze. Finally coming over, I think the last log jam of the trip. It's this huge cedar that came down that caused it. It's so wide you can easily walk out on it. And this uh, like tree or limb is growing out of it. It's still healthy. Made camp on another widening of the river. Uh, energy levels are zero, so I'm gonna uh, make some dinner, eat it, drink a bunch of water, and uh, stay out of the sun for a while. I think I got too much, but at least I got a nice little camp here. Ate a bunch, drank a bunch, feeling better. Uh, yeah, got a great camp with good water access. And by good, I think that means that you shouldn't have to get your feet wet in order to get in the canoe or get water. And a couple of good tent pads, actually. So, just drying out all my stuff, airing it out, actually. It's dry, it's just, it's been a week, week into the trip, so could use some freshness. Put um, laundry sh sheets in my in my uh, clothing bag, which has helped. And it's time for a long rest in the hammock. Every morning on this trip, I wake up and I open the tent and I wonder, is today going to be the nasty day? But every day is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Can't believe my luck.
especially since I don't have a rain jacket. This, this weather couldn't be better timed. What do we got here? There's a bit of weight. This pike took the, uh, the lure pretty deep. So actually, sometimes it's easier to feed the lure through their gills rather than try and yank it out through them. Decent little pike. Wow, there is a worm crawling out of his gills. There was a worm living in your gills, dude. Let me get that for you. That can't be healthy. Look at that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let this guy go. Hey, at least you got something for your trouble. I've never seen that, never dreamt that could be possible. That is hilarious. There he goes. Another one. All the pike here are like a carbon copy. They seem to max out around the four to five pound mark, which isn't of particular interest to me, but it's nice. See what I mean? This guy might be a little bigger. He might might push six pounds, but still not big enough. All in this one spot. They're just stacked up here. I'm starting to get deja vu. <laughs> uh, I was hoping to pull one big gator out of there somewhere, but Seems to be just uh, five, six pounders, so moving on. Finally found the portage to uh, Gong Lake and the shallows here are loaded with tadpoles. And like a little boy, I couldn't resist trying to catch some. It took me like half an hour to find this portage and it's right here it's obvious, but when you don't look at it from the right angle, Hard to find. I just added it up, and I think there are 38 portages on my route in total. Not including some of the exploratory ones that I tried. I've got my fill of portages. Could this be lunch? I have taken the, ah, uh, got a horrible knot in my shoulder. Everything hurts right now. Uh, Took the scenic route off of Gong Lake. Oh yeah, there's lunch. Into uh, Anvil Lake. And I'm gonna stop here for the day because my body is done. And this is a nice trout for lunch. Actually, he's a bit small. I think I'll let this one go. I need a big meal. Is a scorcher again today, and uh, he. Heat is killing me again, so I'm just out of gas. Mid camp here on Anvil Lake on a point, and it's got the largest fireplace in history. I'm technically sitting in it. It's more of a mausoleum than a fireplace, but oh, boiling over. So here's a quick look at camp. It's just this little exposed point. Had the hammock up here, was reading for a couple hours, trying to rest the shoulder. This is the tent pad here. Tent setup's on hold because the wind is, it would just potentially damage it. So I'm just gonna wait until evening, hopefully it dies down. The highlight of the site is, uh, is the water access. It's perfectly sloping rock pretty much all around the point and then it drops off pretty sharply so uh, I'm gonna go for some lake trout now from from shore here
Well, I got a smallish trout. It's a good fistful of meat. There's plenty for one meal. And I'm gonna mix it with ramen and feast. And these seagulls, I better watch out for them. I can't leave my meat unattended or they'll swoop it up. Trout, check. Blackened a little, I like it like that. Sneak a bite. Unbelievable. Mm. So good. Getting into some more trout, uh, mostly Lakers, but also this cute little brookie. Coming. Little Cleo killing it this trip. Sun's almost down and it's still really windy. Got the tent down uh, and set up the canoe as a wind block. Nice start to the day. Well, it's the middle of the day and the water is still like glass. It's warm, sunny again. And I'm approaching the 37th out of 38 portages on the trip. And this is the one I've been dreading for a week. I'm going to be back to the three kilometer portage. So I'm going to stop here on Island Lake and have a big lunch, fuel up and, uh, and get that done. I could leave it for tomorrow, but weather's good today. So I figure I better take advantage and the black flies are starting to, to come out. So sometimes, a day difference they just switch on and I do not want to do that that three kilometer portage with a bunch of black flies so I'm gonna get it done today hey I'm done the portage Samo you old dog how are you say my name say my name on the course of that trek I uh, developed a four-step system for enduring such a hardship first wince second grunt Ugh. third grimace Ugh. fourth sigh ah. it with me now and wince and grunt and grimace and sigh ah. and wince and grunt uh, and grimace and sigh ah. Mercifully got a tailwind to take me across this massive lake. Couldn't be more appreciated. Well, this trip kicked my butt. New injuries every day, including today, foot and neck. So I'm in the uh, hammock hospital, the infirmary, where I go to remedy my ailments. Uh, hi, doctor. Um, my foot hurts a little. Yes, yes, I've seen this before. The only cure is one hour in the hammock. More hammock hospital coming right up after the break. Hurt in a canoe? Fell on your wrist with your own butt? Slip and fall in a muddy portage? Call me, William Matar. I personally guarantee you all the money you probably don't deserve.
Well, that's 10 nights in the books. I am glad that I can sleep on a bed tonight because uh, there's just no comfortable way to sleep anymore. So I'm up before sunrise and packed up and just one short portage back to Ranger Lake. For a trip that started out pretty poorly, this one has turned out to be pretty amazing. I got in right after I was out, so I was lucky. Uh, the bugs have not really showed up yet, which is fantastic. And to have a 10 day trip with weather like this pretty much the entire time is just unheard of for me. So really lucked out. And then maybe most of all, the ice out trout fishing was just off the charts. Caught dozens of trout and then a handful of, uh, a good number of pike and walleye as well. So uh, well worth the effort, but uh, that that's the thing about this trip. It's a tough one. Um, doing it in uh, peak bug season or with bad weather um, could give you a much different outlook, I think, but this was an incredible trip. Lastly, if anyone should ever find the raincoat that the wind stole from me, there's something in the right pocket. And uh, if you find it, uh, I'd like you to keep it. I think that you'll find it's quite a toothsome reward. One last fish, maybe. Just a laker. See if I can shake him here. If you want great trout fishing, forget about uh, Algonquin. Come to Algoma. These trout aren't done with me yet. Well, 38 portages later, I'm back on Ranger Lake.